Hey Finders, welcome back to Fortune Finds. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the NARS Skin Deep Palette. Now, look at this palette. What do you guys think? I saw it online and was like, eh, I don't know. I, I could love it, I could not love it, let's see. So I bought it at Ulta, it retails for $59. You get 12 shades, six of them are matte, six of them are shimmers. It's all relatively nude. I would say this is a nude palette. When I received this in the mail, I took it out. Honestly, I looked at this and was like, yawn this is so boring i showed it to mike and mike was like i don't know i feel like you own every eyeshadow palette under the sun like is this really that different so that inspired me to come upstairs put it to the test compare it to all my other shadows and honestly a lot of these shades resembled shades that i have that are my favorite shades in a bunch of different palettes so i was like you know what this could be like the ultimate palette although it may look boring is so sophisticated you can do any look with it if you just want to take this pink shadow shimmery shade right here put it on your fingers swipe it on the lid curl your lashes throw on some mascara call it a day that is a beautiful everyday look or you can go up here throw some shimmers you can really create like the ultimate smoky eye you can create a perfect daytime look or a look like this i think this is like so sophisticated and sultry and i really love what i did if you guys are new to my channel hi welcome my name is fortune this is my channel fortune finds which i'm sure you gathered because you clicked the link and i already did my intro saying hello but um if you are not yet subscribed hit the subscribe button i am a heavy review channel i love reviewing things and i rarely do first impression of videos i like to really get to know a product for at least a few weeks before sitting down this way i have a list of pros and cons what doesn't work, what does work, so I can really give you guys the full rundown of how the product performs. So I have been playing with this for the last month. I'm a very, very big fan. If you're a finder and you've been here for a while, you know I love NARS. Now the only, only con I'm gonna tell you guys now is the fact that this thing is a bitch to open. Now it might just be the palette that I bought. I leave it, like I don't shut it all the way. I don't know, does shadow go bad from like air? Like do I need to close this? I don't know, I should really look that up, but I've been leaving it open because it is such a bitch to open. Like the clasp, I like fight with it every single time. But that is the only con. So if you're interested in creating this look, without further ado, let's stop babbling and let's get on to the NARS Skin Deep Eyeshadow Palette Review. Okay, so I already have my eyebrows on and I've already done one eye off camera. My brows like really, really need to be groomed. I'm growing them out right now, so they kind of look a little crazy. So I find this next step really necessary for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a concealer that I don't really like as concealer. So for me, you know I am not a fan of the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Aqua Sealer Concealer. I put a dollop on the back of my hand, Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH43. I'm just going to pick up some of that on my brush and I'm just going to underline the brows. Just like cleaning them up and this is going to kind of cancel out those random hairs that are everywhere because the concealer kind of lays like that flesh tone over it. So this is a really good trick for me, especially when I'm growing my brows out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing above the brow. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more on my brush. And then I like to sculpt the top a lot because I do have a lot of strays up here. And this does a really good job of cleaning them up. And I do like to bring some between the brows, put a little dollop on my eye, and then using my ring finger, I'm just gonna pat this all into the eye. And this will act as the base for our shadow look. Once that's all patted out and there are no creases, I'm gonna jump into the palette. So I'm gonna grab this shade right here, which I think this is called Taunt, if I'm reading it correctly. I always like struggle with the back, like flipping. It doesn't really coincide well when you flip it, but I'm pretty sure this is the shade Taunt. This is a Farrah 35E brush and I'm just patting this down. This doesn't need to be precise. This is just setting that concealer that we just put all over the eye. Setting the concealer really helps to ensure that the shadow blends out easily. If you don't set the concealer, it will grab onto your shadow that you're applying over it and it will kind of leave that like skipping effect. The Luxie Precision Blending in 243. And I think this is called Faster Pussycat, which I love. So I'm going to grab this shade right here. And I'm just going to almost like line my eye with this color, keeping it really, really close to the waterline. JH42 is just a little flat brush like this. I'm going to grab that same shade 
Now, when I wing out with a shadow or with an eyeliner, no matter what I'm doing a wing with, I like to take my mirror. So I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna look straight into the mirror and keep my eye open. This is important for me because I do have slightly hooded eyes. So I have a lot of creases and crevices. So if I were to just close my eye and draw the line and then open it, it's not gonna look the same. If you're pulling your eye like this and then drawing the crease on, as soon as you let go of your eye, the crease folds are natural. They're gonna fall exactly where they are and then your wing is either gonna be crooked or jagged or it's gonna disappear underneath those folds. So it is really important to keep your eyes open. Now I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which I believe is Sophia Glamour Dolls Blending Brush and I'm just gonna tap that in there tapping off the excess. I like to bring my crease up a little bit higher than the actual crease folds in my eye, just because again, if I'm putting it in the crease and I have hooded eyes, so if I were to put it right here, close my eyes, put it right here, and then open my eyes, that crease shade would disappear because of that fold in my eye. So it's really important, you guys, to just know what exactly it is that you're working with in terms of the canvas of your eyes, the canvas of your face. I preach this all the time on my channel. Just play around, you know, makeup is supposed to be fun and if you don't play around and try different things, you're not gonna know what works for you. I have watched beauty tutorials forever. I used to sit in my dorm room and watch Chloe Morello nonstop and Jacqueline Hill, both of them. I would always follow them, but it would never turn out the same because my eye shape is very different than the two of them. So when they would literally put things in the crease and then blend it out, I would do the same thing and I would open my eyes and it would literally look like I put no eyeshadow on my eyes because I have very creasy eyes. It's all about playing with what you have and finding what works best for you. So just grab a blending brush, try it out, try a bunch of different things. Not before long, you will find what exactly works best for you. JH36, I'm gonna grab this taupey shade right here called Undressed, tap off the excess and put this in the crease as well. Just wanna give a little bit of dimension to the eye. An angled brush, this is just a Sephora angled liner brush. You can take any one. I'm gonna dip into this dark shade right here. I think it's called Coconut Grove. I'm just gonna stamp this right where the lashes are and this is just gonna create an illusion that our lashes are a little bit thicker, a little bit darker, just helping to build up some more dimension. I'm gonna go in with a flat brush. This is a JH41 and I'm gonna grab that first shade undressed i don't know i'm very confused maybe this is taunt maybe i'm calling these all wrong okay but i'm showing you so it doesn't matter i'm gonna grab this color right here and i'm just gonna place that on the lid right above where we put the wing just to create a little bit more contrast and I also like this because it helps blend all the shades together. We didn't have anything right here, so I think throwing on a nude shade just kind of like makes it look more cohesive. So it's not like shadow skin shadow, it's like all shadow, you know? I'm gonna grab this shade right here on a flat brush. This is a Japanese brush. I hit that right underneath the brow. Keeping it in the NARS family, I am just like heavy on the NARS lately. I'm gonna be using this Radiance Primer Broad Spectrum and it has an SPF 35, which I love. Just a little dollop, rub it between my fingers and I'm just gonna throw this onto the skin. This instantly brings such luminosity to the skin. It's like crazy. I love this stuff, it's so, so good. Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation and I am in the shade Vienna and make sure you shake this. It says shake well on the bottom, but this does separate, so just beware. Let's start with two pumps on the back of my hand and I'm gonna apply this with a brush. Like if you want full, full coverage, you go in with a sponge. So since we put that Radiant Primer down underneath, I want it to be able to poke through just a little bit. So that is why I'm using a brush today. What is the point of using a radiant primer if you're just going to cancel out the radiance might as well just not use it my skin has been so awful lately i mean it's very clear but it's so dry so i've been really making sure to exfoliate before applying any makeup anything literally is adhering to dry patches especially if you guys watch my bh cosmetics wear test oh my god my dry patches were like <sighs> on fleek in that video it was really crazy i still can't really get that foundation to work for me which is really sad i was so excited because it was only six dollars but hey you know not everything works for everyone nars radiant creamy concealer and i am in the shade light vanilla i'm going to throw it underneath the eyes and kind of just bringing it up here because i do get some purple 
around my nose, a little dab on my chin, and I'm gonna put some just like right here. And I'm just gonna pat this into my skin. And then underneath my eyes, I'm gonna use my ring finger to just pat this out. It is way more natural than using a sponge or a brush. I'm gonna take a damp beauty sponge. There's nothing on this. I'm not adding foundation. I'm not adding anything. I just simply ran this underwater and then squeezed out the excess. I take a little bit of my Morphe Continuous Setting Spray and I'm just gonna spritz this all over. I'm just gonna run this all over my face. This will not cancel out that primer because we're not adding any more product to the face. We're kind of just like shearing what's on our face out a little bit more. Setting spray pressed into the skin helps make the foundation and concealer and anything else that you put on your face that is cream a little less cakey. It's just picking up any of the excess while pushing that setting spray into your skin. Now I'm gonna set the under eyes and to set them today, I have really, really been into this Ofra banana powder, patting it, tapping off the excess and just stamping that underneath the eye. And I'm just gonna put it around my smile lines and on my nose because this is where I tend to get a little oily throughout the day and where my foundation and concealer tend to move a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply a blush first and you guessed it, I'm gonna use NARS. This is the NARS Orgasm Blush, a Morphe E4 angled brush. I'm just gonna pat this on the skin. Now the reason why I'm patting is because I did not set my entire face. So this can be a little skippy because you're putting a powder on top of damp skin. I will say damp, I don't wanna say wet, but you know, like foundation is liquid, we put concealer, we did powder under here, but we didn't powder here. So this is still a little damp. So I'm gonna press this into the skin so that we don't move the foundation, the blush doesn't look skippy, it doesn't look patchy. If I were to go in and set my entire face using a translucent setting powder, then I could go in and just swipe this like I typically would, but I'm not doing that today because I don't want to move what we've already done. I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm just gonna put this like everywhere. I know you might think this is crazy, it is a little crazy. But I just feel like it makes everything look so cohesive. My cheeks don't look too flush now. It kind of looks like that's, I have this beautiful radiance in my skin all over my face. NARS bronzer, because y'all knew that was coming. This is the Laguna bronzer, and I'm gonna take a small Japanese brush, and I'm just gonna contour ever so slightly. So I'm just picking it up, and then right underneath that blush, right where my cheekbone naturally, right underneath it, I'm just carving that out. Same thing on this side, and bringing it along the jawline. Just lightly sculpting out the face. I'm gonna pat it up here because I'm dry and again, I didn't set up here and I have a lot of dry patches so I don't want to disturb them and make them look raised or anything. So I'm just patting it up here, giving the illusion that my forehead is a little bit smaller than it is. And then I'm gonna take some right here and just go like that, like right where the wing is like extending the wing with bronzer. Because if you put a shadow here and a shadow here, it kind of makes this look lifted, you see? It looks a little bit more lifted on this side than it does on this side. And then what's ever left on my brush, I'm just gonna bring it down my nose. Favorite highlighter, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezi highlighter. I just love this right here. I'm gonna take some on my ring finger and just put it down the bridge of my nose, some on my cupid's bow. I'm just gonna take a spoolie, take any spoolie from any of your eyebrow pencils and I'm just gonna brush the brows up. This is just gonna help take out any of the powder, maybe the eyeshadow, the bronzer, any kind of powder that may have fallen into the brows and compromised the shade of them. So I'm just brushing that up. I don't wanna add more color to them because I feel like my brows are super bushy as it is because like I said, I really need to go get them done. So I'm just gonna take a clear brow gel. The Hourglass brow gel is my favorite. And what I love about this is that it has two types of bristles. So on one side, it's really long. So right here, you can see they're super long. And then if you were to flip it, they're super short like any other brow pencil. I will take the long brow side and I will brush the front of my brow up, like straight up like so. Take the shorter side and just brush the tail up. Still going up. Morphe Continuous Setting Spray and I'm just gonna set my whole face. 
Now I'm going to go in with some mascara. And the reason why I sprayed my face first is because the wetness from the spray really it will dampen your eyelashes. You can move them a little bit easier. You can play with them, shape them how you want. So for today, I'm gonna to be using the Unique Moonstruck Epic Mascara. And I'm just gonna coat the top lashes. You know when you open a new mascara and your brush just picks up way too much? Well, what I like to do is I will keep a mascara that's kind of like on its last leg. I'll take the wand from the dying mascara and just go over my lashes. And this wand has literally nothing on it, so it will help disperse the mascara that's on my lashes already and make them look a little less clumpy. And that was a really good fortune. Okay, so we're just gonna put the mascara down for now. I think this guy is dry, so let's pick him off with a spoolie. And then to make sure I get all the flecks of it off, I'll go in with that blending brush so there's nothing on it and just kind of like go like that. And then for the face, I'll go in with my powder brush that we use the Ofer powder on and go like that. And then let's pray to God we can get this guy off. Oh, wow, wow, wow. He came off pretty easy. I'm going to take this long pencil brush again and I'm going to grab this shade right here. And I'm just going to put this underneath the eyes just to like contour the lower lash line a bit. I'm gonna go back in with this shiny red shade that we used as the wing, GH42. I'm gonna pick that up and I'm just gonna keep this right underneath the lash line. And I'm like pushing and smudging, pushing and smudging. Now I'm gonna take a flat, fluffy brush shade right here and I'm just really smudging this one out. GH42, I'm gonna grab that pink, shiny shade right here and I'm gonna put this in the inner corner very precisely, like kind of packing it on. Okay, to line my lips today, I'm gonna to be using the NYX Pale Pink Lip Liner again. Sorry, it's not NARS, but I'm about to get back to NARS in just a second. But I do think it's important to line my lips considering the lipstick that I'm gonna be using today, which is the NARS New Lover Velvet Gloss Pencil. So I feel like this will move on me. So I wanna lay down a liner. This way it creates that barrier between my lips and my skin so that the gloss doesn't, you know, move. And this is like so juicy. I feel like this is perfect for summer. So shiny. Mm, I feel like that's too pink for this. What do we want to do? I don't love this lip color with this. This is limited edition, so I'm really sorry that I'm doing this to you guys. But this is NARS, so don't hate me. Asphalt Jungle Lip Gloss. I love this color. This is limited edition. I should have bought six. My dumbass only bought one. This shade definitely ties it back into the eyes. I feel like this is so refreshing. I love this. Popping back in real quick, then we're done. I'm really sorry. The telescopic mascara, I'm just gonna do my bottom lash line. And like I always do, I forgot to swatch the shadows for you guys. So I'm doing it on my iPhone before hopping in bed. So the shimmers are really pretty, they are sparkly. This isn't like the best kind of swatching palette. I mean, it didn't really swatch that great. I had to go over each and every shade at least two or three times but the shades are really beautiful and they do do a wonderful job of blending on the eyes. So that is all 12 swatched. All right guys, and this is the finished makeup look. I have to say, I really, really love how this turned out. I think it's so romantic, sexy, sultry. This is exactly the vibe that emulates what I think of when I look at this palette. Where is the palette that I've been using? You should like really see my desk. It is disgustingly atrocious how messy it is right now, but I've just been like in the makeup so much lately. I find it to be like the perfect escape when I'm having a rough time. And I've been going through some stuff lately with my cat. I don't really know, maybe it's like the weather. Maybe I have like seasonal, I don't wanna say depression because I feel like that's not a word you can throw out lightly. I don't think I'm depressed, but I think it has something to do with the season. So kind of like a funk, I'm just like in a funk. Yes, I have said that this palette is a little bit boring. Like to me, it's kind of boring. There's nothing really fun about it, but if you really take a second to look at it, it's sexy, it's romantic, it's sophisticated. Like it's everything you could possibly need in a palette. I'm such a NARS freak. I've always been a NARS freak. I think that this palette 
really took me by surprise. I didn't think much was going to come out of it. I have been using it like crazy. I think this is well worth the price. I think the pigments blend beautifully. I think they blend seamlessly. They're not patchy. They're not skippy. I love them. This is a beautiful, beautiful palette. I also love all the other NARS products that I used in this video. But I think you guys get the gist of how much I really enjoyed this palette. I had a wonderful time creating this video and creating this look with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. Leave me some love in the comments. Let me know, do you like this palette? would you buy this palette do you like this look if you are not yet subscribed please be sure to do so i'm a heavy review channel i love doing videos like this where i really play around with the palette for a few weeks i get to know it i write down my pros and cons what i love about it what i don't love about it the best way to use it and then i come and i sit down and i let you guys know all of my findings hence the name fortune finds so please be sure to subscribe and also click the bell button this way you get a notification every time i'm uploading a video here on my youtube channel i had a wonderful time as always thank you guys so much for joining me and i will see you in my next one bye finders Mwah.